I get an extra couple of minutes. Musicians are always asked to play. It's the weird thing about things like this. I guarantee you Michael Morpurgo isn't going to write you a short fucking story when he comes up here. And <laughs> if Mary Berry were here, she wouldn't be baking cupcakes. Um, but we musicians, we dance like monkeys for you. Um, which is lovely, in a way. Um, that piece, the reason I chose it is, A, because the piano is not a Steinway, if I'm honest. Um, it's a little bit battered, a little bit bruised. It's a prelude written by Chopin. And this is Opus 28, number four, in E minor, because I'm sure all of you care about stuff like that. It's 25 bars long. That's all. And I guarantee that there is not a single person in this room tonight, not one, who wouldn't be able to play that piece in a few short weeks. And I know that might sound like a, a pretty bold statement, but I really believe it, and I've seen it. You need a piano. You can get one for free on eBay. Can you believe that? It costs you 100 quid or two to get it up the stairs. Get a keyboard. You need to learn to read music. It's really very easy. Kids do it every day. It doesn't take long. And maybe a teacher for a few lessons just to show you the basics, the fundamentals of you know, what finger goes on which note. It's not particularly hard. And then 40 minutes a day. And then a few weeks later, you'll be playing a piece like that or one of thousands like it from memory. And so I want to talk not so much, uh, giant advert, um, <laughs> sorry, not so much about the book, but I, I want to talk about creativity tonight. I'll talk about my creative process. <laughs> and for me, creativity, it's the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. And there are two processes that are involved here. There's thinking and then producing. So if you have ideas, but you don't act on them, sure, you're imaginative, but you're not creative. We have to act, and I think it's never been more important than it is right now to rediscover that part of us that we had when we were kids and just, it just gets beaten out of us month by month, ex-wife by ex-wife, mortgage payment by mortgage payment until, and it astonishes me that we seem to be so happy to deprive ourselves of something we would be horrified at depriving our children of. Speaking of children, everyone knows learning a musical instrument is a good thing. In fact, the latest research by Susan Hallam, it was at UCL a few months ago, it proves, it shows that it improves discipline, self-confidence, social skills, focus, problem-solving, language, literacy, maths, personal well-being. It's an extraordinary thing, and those are the kind of things I would want our children from school to bring into adulthood with them because they're skills that will apply to their jobs, to their relationships, to their families, to their friendships. And yet, music education in this country, this is my soapbox moment, by the way, pay attention. Music education in this country is hurtling off the edge of a cliff and the government is applauding um, in between doing unspeakable things to pigs as it falls off the edge of the cliff, allegedly. Um, they had this wonderful national plan in 2011. Every child from every part of the country, from whatever background, will have the opportunity to learn an instrument for a year. It's not happening. Fewer than 44% last year played an instrument for a year. And by play an instrument, I mean share a ukulele between 10 other classmates for 20 minutes once a week. By the time they get to year seven, fewer than 10% are recorded as learning an instrument. They should have already been learning for a year and being able to continue, and it's not happening. And I did a lot of work with this. I, I went to a primary school in Basildon. And here's the thing. You take a kid who's not particularly athletic, who's not particularly academic, who's not particularly popular. You give them an instrument. You maybe give him a solo in the orchestra. He grows about three feet taller. 
His buddies gather around, they want to know how he does it. He helps them tune up, they practice together, they show up on time to rehearsals. It's an extraordinary transition. You think you might not be able to play that piece in a few weeks. These kids didn't even know what the instruments I gave them were called, let alone having touched one or seen them. They're nine years old, 10 years old. Within 17 days, I had them playing Beethoven in assembly. It's astonishing what we're capable of. And as we all know, 94% of adults in a recent survey think that kids should learn an instrument. I'd love to know the reasons for the other 6%. I, I'm assuming they're in a locked ward somewhere. But what about those adults? Here's the thing, we are constant, and I'm guilty of it myself, we're constantly looking outside of ourselves to try and fix or make things better. And we buy shit we don't need from Amazon, where we get high, we get drunk, we overeat, we travel, we swipe right or left and you know, to try and fill the hole with the next relationship. It's an awkward analogy, isn't it? Um, Sorry. <laughs> the wonderful thing about creativity is that it does the opposite. It doesn't go over there, it, it goes in here. You know, you read those awful interviews with people and it talks about going into the zone. But it's true. And weirdly, the more time you spend doing something creative, the more time you get back. You go inside and time stands still and it, it gives us all of those things, that awful buzzword, mindfulness promises us. I think next month you can relax, it'll be polenta or yoga ballet or something. But and one of the saddest myths about creativity also is that it's only a certain section of society. It's like architecture. You wander around Regent's Park and you think, God, these buildings are amazing, but you know, other people live there. It was such a crock of shit. All children are creative. Picasso said all children are artists. And then I think very wisely he added, the challenge is to remain an artist as you transition into adulthood. <laughs> like Martin said so brilliantly, we are facing extraordinary challenges at the moment. Population growth on an unprecedented scale. Natural resources vanishing faster than a rat out of an aqueduct. Massive change in finances and politics and technology that brings with them their own issues and, and problems. My take is that thinking and imagination isn't going to fix these things. It's not going to solve them. Creativity is. Discipline. <laughs> it's another big bonus of creativity. It's so important. The rewards we get from doing this are something else. There's no app for learning the piano or how to paint. We've got so lazy. I can, I can bank, order groceries, get laid and watch a movie all at the same time on a phone. I don't have to move. So what can we do? You can write a thousand words a day. It's not hard. And then in two months, you've got a novel. Imagine that, 60,000 words. You can take a photography class, you can learn to cook, you can go to drawing lessons, gardening, knitting. How about, I'm sure most of you who have kids, in fact, I imagine all of you who have kids in this room, they had lessons or have lessons in an instrument. How about instead of saying to them, it's time to practice your scales, you say to them, it's time for us to go practice our scales. They'll love that because they'll be better than you so much quicker. <laughs> they'll feel a million dollars if you do it together. I've lost count of the number of people who come up to me and they say something like, oh, I used to play the piano as a kid and I really regret giving it up. It's like when I was writing this goddamn book which almost killed me. People saying, oh, I, I, mean, I know I've got a book inside me. And I think, well, stop bloody talking about it. Do it. I... And so occasionally I'll be brave and I'll say, well, what's stopping you? Oh, time. <laughs> so busy. Oh, not enough hours in the day. And I thought about that, and I thought, well, I'll spoil you, and you can all have eight hours sleep a night. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> and then you can work for 10 hours. And then being generous, you want to go to the bathroom and eat and put the kids to bed. I'll give you four hours for that. You've got another two hours. What are we going to do? Watch Come Dine With Me. Seriously? This is a call to arms, in a way, because there is no downside to it. 
I don't think. I've been racking my brains to think of, the, there's this awful myth of, you know, the mad, crazy, creative people who are, you know, cutting off their ears and putting forks in their eyes. And it's categorically untrue. There is no link between creativity and mental illness. I promise you. I promise you. These guys, these composers, with the singular exception of Schumann, who was genuinely, disturbingly bipolar, they, they would not be diagnosed today with one of the severe mental illnesses any more than anyone in this room would be, which is you know, pretty much most of us. If, I, if you've seen the DSM-5 recently, it's, it's scary. These guys, they composed and they created despite being depressed or anxious or drowning in grief. They did it because it works, because there weren't 12-step programs and Prozac, and they did it because at four in the morning it was the one thing that kept them going. <laughs> this was at a time, don't forget, that Keats went to see a doctor because he thought he was mentally ill, and the doctor said, you're absolutely right, you have a mental illness related to poetry. <laughs> it's one of my favorite ideas. And I'd love to think things have moved on since then in psychiatry. They haven't really, I don't think. I didn't play a note for 10 years um, from the age of 18. In fact, the one thing in the book, there's, a, there's some good things in the book, there's some quite dark things, but the one thing I'm most ashamed of in this book is the fact that I went and worked in the city for a number of years. It's there's just, I can only apologize for it. There's no, there's no excuse, there's no, it was a kind of, aggressive form of self-harm for me. Um, and then I came back to the piano and I worked my ass off and I practiced. And, and then I wrote this book, this goddamn book, which is not a great book, it's an okay book. And I had to go to the Supreme Court to get permission to publish it. I won in the High Court, I lost in the Court of Appeal. I went to the Supreme Court. It took 14 months. I had a charging order put on my house. The, the, I am so pleased by this fucking book. I'm so, I have so many legal bills to play. There's CDs as well downstairs. Um, I, what's the one thing that stopped me, th not throwing the TV out the window, throwing myself out the bloody window at three in the morning was, was the piano, it was learning new pieces, was writing something for one of the papers, was doing something creative. And of course, look, we don't need to go so extreme. I'm talking about 40 minutes a day. There's a middle ground here. I think creativity really is, is, it's a solution maybe we don't even know we're looking for. It's a way of turning our phones off. Because I've I got to be frank, there are several times a day I want to stand in whatever room I'm in and just say, please, can you shut the fuck up? Everyone, just stop. <laughs> and go inside, that brilliant description of that temporary safety of that place where you know you're safe, that joy that you feel, that's what it is. The piano used to be Instagram in Victorian times. It used to be Twitter and God help us, Tinder. <laughs> there was a time not so long ago there were more pianos in this country than there were bathtubs. And I'm not advocating that. I'm aware I'm running out of time. I think this thing, they're very serious about time here. This, this actually explodes if this goes, and if you're still talking, so I'm, I'm gonna wrap up. All I'm gonna say is, I guarantee you, if you spend 40 minutes a day and you get a teacher, and a few weeks down the line, you're at someone's house and there's a piano in the corner, maybe there's a girl you fancy, and they say, as they always do, oh, do you play the piano? You go, actually, I do, I play a little bit of Chopin. And you sit down and you play it, you're going to feel a million dollars. Thank you.